Hello, Prestige Heads, and welcome to American Prestige. I'm Danny Bessner, here as always with my friend and comrade, Derek Davison. And we're very excited to welcome to the podcast today, Shireen Saikali. Um, Shireen is an associate professor of history at the University of California at Santa Barbara and an expert in the history of Palestine. Uh, so Shireen, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So we wanted to start by talking about an essay you wrote actually before um, everything that has been going on in Israel and Gaza uh, last May titled Nakba in the Age of Catastrophe. And it might make sense um, by you beginning to talk about what you mean by this concept of the age of catastrophe and how does the Nakba um, and Palestinian history fit into this broader idea? Thanks so much. So this essay that you're talking about was actually, I wrote it in uh, to mark the 75th anniversary of the inception of the Nakba, which is, as most of your listeners know, um, a, a word that means catastrophe and that marks the death of contiguous Palestine in 1948 when um, 750,000 people became stateless refugees and 150,000 Palestinians would come to be uh, citizen strangers, as the scholar Shira Robinson um, names it. So that means that those are the people that we um, are often uh, uh, heard talked about as quote unquote Israeli Arabs, a, a deeply colonial category that erases uh, the Palestinianness of these people. So in 1948, as you all know, 750,000 people become stateless refugees and 150,000 people become citizen strangers on their own land. They would come to live under military rule until 1966, a period of time that we can consider a kind of draft policy for the occupation and its policies after 1967 when Israel occupies the West Bank and Gaza. So this essay was trying to mark 1948 and the, and the anniversary, as, as, as a lot of us often do. Um, I jokingly called it, uh, call it Nekba season, <laughs> when people reach out to Palestinian scholars and organizers and say, okay, we're here to kind of commemorate this, um, this Nekba. And as so many people have been writing, I think most notably it was Hanan Ashrawi, um, in the 90s, who who called our condition an ongoing Nakba, meaning that the denial of Palestinian peoplehood and politics that began in 1948, um, and arguably began before that, um, is not a finite, discrete event, but rather an ongoing process of dispossession and the denial of self-determination. At the time in uh, last May, when I was writing this piece, I wanted to really pose uh, Palestine as a place full of lessons, not as a place where theory is implemented, not as a case study, but rather a place from which we can understand uh, how power works. And in that case, I wanted to think about what might Palestine teach us about surviving catastrophe? In this context, at this moment, I, wa I, I live in California. I live on Shumash land. Um, so uh, I often say I'm a Palestinian settler. And uh, uh, on this land in California, we have been very much at the uh, forefront of complete climate catastrophe. And at the time of writing, we were wrestling with uh, a momentous flooding um, that had really uh, uh, threatened the state finances, uh, well-being, this kind of incredible battering, you know, atmospheric river storms, corridors of air and water producing landslides, sinkholes, and down trees. And, and I was pondering, you know, what does it mean for California to have experienced in, in that last year, in that last period, 400 to 600% of its average rainfall. 
And I was really thinking about the ways that climate catastrophe has been so relentless in our everyday life um, as a kind of generalized condition of our time. And, and in this way, I was...